Oh, sorry. Sorry. You know, one of the grave dangers of listening to an audiobook is that you can fall asleep. Although I'm sure no one will fall asleep listening to Introduction to Sailing by Christian Williams. That's me. You know, I love books. I grew up with them. Sailing books were filled with diagrams and polar charts and such. But nowadays, all of the technical stuff about sailing, how to tack and jibe and rig a spinnaker is, is marvelously presented in YouTube videos that are free. So what I wanted to do was to evoke the whole picture of sailing. I guess for people who know a little bit about it and would like to know more, would like to get started sailing, would like to move up to a bigger boat. I mean, how do I find one? How much should it cost? How big should it be? What's it all about? So that was the goal of Introduction to Sailing as an audiobook. And I think, in fact, it is the first specifically designed to be listened to instead of thumb through page by page, which I guess means that if you don't like it, you can't throw it across the room. But even so, there's an added benefit, and that is that you can listen to it in your car. And so, to use that specificity, let's head for the boat. A project like this makes you think about how you learned yourself, and I did it by making every possible mistake. Which leads me to think that mistakes are good. Sailing's not inherently dangerous, and we might as well just give it a try under control conditions and see what happens. You just remember more about things when you screw them up, and it's easier to fix them next time. And in, in writing this book, I, I really got a chance to revisit my own experience, and in particular, the closeness, uh, the camaraderie of crews. Uh, Bob Woodward's crew, which we called the Timeless Crew, we sailed together, five of us, for three or four years, went all over the place, Bermuda, Virgin Gorda, and uh, those friendships have lasted 30, 40 years. It's a great bonding experience, and I've also sailed with people that I hardly knew. We had a crew of 19 in the Fast Net Race in 1979, which I discuss a little bit, and in a Force 12 storm, there's nothing that brings people together faster than that. The social aspect, uh, the social currency, the social experience of sailing is not something that's talked about enough. Brokers talk about lifestyle, but uh, it's more like people doing the same thing together and feeling the sun in the air on their face and learning new stuff together. Somewhere between 30 and 40 feet in overall length is a boat ready to handle weather, cruise for weeks at a time, give dinner parties at the dock, and even cross oceans, which, if that has appeal, is entirely within the province of sailboats this summer. Here's why we're here. Emergency beacon registration has to be renewed. You get a sticker every two years, which has your correct information on it, so that when the uh, Coast Guard calls home in the event of a disaster and the phone rings, the answer isn't, lost at sea? Never heard of them. I do believe in learning from your mistakes, but that's not one of them. What a day. Too bad we're not going sailing. Here's a five minute sample of Introduction to Sailing. Hi, I'm Christian Williams and welcome aboard. For the next few hours, we'll be talking about sailing and sailboats in what I hope is more like a conversation than a textbook. We'll discuss boats, small and large, which might be right, how to choose and how to buy one, and how the simple decision to learn to sail can change everything and open up the door to a new world.
We'll even learn how to sail, at least in our imagination. Because that's where most sailing takes place. In the rehearsal and contemplation of it. In the memory of a line in your hand and a sail set against the sky. And in the reconstruction of new experience. Because sailing is something that's always new, even to those of us who've been at it for a while. Sailing is imagination. I have on the wall before me a photograph of Harold Vanderbilt in necktie and blazer at the helm of his 135-foot-long J-class sailing yacht with a paid crew of 30. He looks stern, as befits a railroad baron at leisure, the sea rushing past his two-tone yachting shoes. Sailing has always been that. But it's also a nine-year-old girl in an optimus pram, a tiny bathtub of a sailboat less than eight feet long, struggling to keep up with her sailing class in some sunny harbor. There are lots of kids like her, and she's sailing too. Somewhere in between is us, and with always the ability to change boats and ambitions. Sailing is an open door for those who choose to go through it, and life on the other side is often forever changed. I guess you could say that about golf, too, or badminton. No, you couldn't. Sailing is more than a sport or a pastime. Well, as I say, it's an open door to the universe. Set foot on a sailboat and the water around us is suddenly alive. It laps against our side, and if we put our hand down into it, why, we are suddenly aware of this strange blue liquid that covers 70% of the planet. It buoys us as we float. It cradles us for the moment, although in the very next moment it may become spray flying and white caps flashing in our heart and our mouth because this is real water, not water in a water glass, not water on a mop, but water as it has been for four billion years, the water of which we're made and without which we couldn't exist. It reflects its colleague, the wind, which scores it with waves and ripples and makes beaches foam and flags snap on their poles. In our conversation, I'll probably go on and on a bit about how small boats are the best teachers. They're easy to buy and store, and a good starting point, and also a good ending point. Did I say that we can sail all our lives, and through infirmity, and when athleticism has long gone, if we were ever athletes at all? and that we can be in the seventh grade, or a middle-aged woman, or a young buck, or an old goat, and find equal challenge and companionship and competition. I don't think you can say that about the NFL. Small sailboats are suitable for families on a quiet afternoon, and also to knock the socks off young men and women for whom triathlons are just too easy. It depends on what boat you choose. A day sailor is a trailerable sailboat designed for four, where anyone can take the helm while someone else uncorks the Prosecco and passes the hors d'oeuvres around. Here's to that. But a sailboat the very same length can be entirely different, designed as a high-tech rocket ship on which skipper and crew hang in trapezes, fly enormous spinnakers, and rise out of the water like a motorboat to hurtle off waves and hair-raising demonstrations of skill and nerve. The next step beyond dinghies and day sailors is cruising boats. They're designed to take us sailing to overnight destinations. They can be small, suitable for no more than two or three crew, and in which waking up in a new anchorage means making coffee on a sterno stove with a bucket for a toilet. Or they can be 40 feet long with air conditioning and hot showers and ice cream in the deep freeze. If we learn to sail a dinghy, we've also learned how to sail them. The partnership with the wind is the same for every kind of sailboat. What is not the same is the price range of boats large and small.